What's up, guys? How's it going, Crypto Sonyak community? Uh, it's been a while since I've been on YouTube, so I'm gonna grab this link and try to share it with everyone as best I can. Let's see. It should say I'm going live. So I'm gonna inform my community and all the other communities that I'm a part of. And then we can get this party on the road. All right, all right. So here's our Discord group. Um, I hope you guys come join. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do a everyone tag on this because why not? All right, and uh, let's see what else we got. Um, click on this. I'm not gonna do everyone tag here. Some other channels that I'm a part of. So today, guys, we're gonna talk about um, some Bitcoin options. We're gonna go over some trade plans, strategies, and some areas that we've um, you know covered over the past uh, few days. I also want to tell you guys about. Um, you know how exactly we've been faring in this market where we've been uh, entering trades taking profits etc okay so I want to show you guys you know going right into our community and showing you uh, exactly where um, you know we enter trades where we exit trades how much profit we make etc right and I want to show you um, exactly the thought process and reasoning behind that so you can learn for yourself you know if you're interested in that okay so here we go let's get started um let me know if you guys can hear me properly i know i was having some mic issues earlier but uh it should all be resolved by now so let's uh let's get this party on the road we got btc on the one hour chart um let's see so all right so here we go okay um the daily just closed right uh let's see where the daily close and i mentioned to my community that you know i would like to see the daily close you know essentially above um 5300 and it looks like uh the daily close at 5318 okay so why was i you know looking for that well so when we were looking at the one hour chart over here okay actually let's go to 30 minutes let's start a little bit smaller um, and on the 30 minute chart, there's all these, you know, different trend lines, grids, everything that I've mocked up. So don't be, um, don't be alarmed. I'll explain it all. So first things first, this outer line and this line right here were the existing parallel channel. And then I decided to draw another, um, you know, sort of sideways uh, ascending trend line with this wick touch right here, this wick and this one right here. Okay. Um, so what we saw was actually these two were touching and then this one didn't come up till, you know, yesterday. Okay. So once we had this third touch right here, you know, it essentially validated our, uh, you know, third trend line right here. And I saw earlier today, uh, a couple of hours ago that I saw, you know, prices getting rejected heavily from 5,500, which is something that we spoke about. Uh, we pretty much took profits up here in our community and I'll show you guys exactly. So you can, you know, look at our timestamps and you know that we essentially sold the top and we kind of avoided this whole garbage right here okay so now prices are moving back up uh in this region um right around 53.30 and it looks like btc wants to climb back up again uh pretty solid you know resolve from bitcoin at this particular point it's been you know about two hours of up upward movement right here because it's you know four 30 minute candles uh, so now we need to see if Bitcoin is going to hit the top of this channel right here, right? And then come back again, create a higher low, and then sort of, um, you know, head back up towards that $5,400, $5,500 area, okay? And that's something that, you know, we hope that price price will, you know, get up to that level. Um, but I want to show you guys some of the bigger picture things that we're looking at, okay? So here's a different chart that I mentioned a couple days ago to our community again if you're not part of our community come join we are the cryptosomniac 
uh, community and I provide you know multiple uh, Bitcoin updates through the day and every single morning I provide a 10 to 15 minute video analysis kind of like I did this one sometimes I post snippets from my book uh, like this um, to explain my points about particular patterns that I'm seeing what kind of volume action that you need to be looking for okay so when we go back to this chart right here we have price now starting to head back up towards that $5,500 area but here's where we drew this little supply zone okay when you have a up candle like this and then a sharp rejection you have to mark this as a supply zone okay why because when the candle tried to go up and try to create higher highs or even just try to mark prices higher there was a significant rejection by the bears and the price just tanked right so this clearly means that in this particular area right here there's a lot of sellers okay why because you saw that reaction right there right so now we know that price dumped off in this area right around November. So we have to assume that there's a lot of sellers still waiting in this area. Why? Because we have no other way of knowing that if sellers are up below or lower or higher, we have to just assume that these same sellers right here, okay, if they were looking to sell off their Bitcoin in this particular area, just to either break even or they don't want to have more loss, they may still have some orders waiting to be filled. They may have some big orders or people just want to break even when price hits this level and they want to just sell their position right when price gets to break even. So $5,500 all the way to say $5,700 might be their break even marker. And that's why you see a lot of sellers in this area. And that's why we also saw this big rejection. Okay. Now, if you go in our community, we pretty much sold off right at the top of this candle and you can ask anyone who's watching this YouTube video who's part of our community as you can see um, you know we this was around 317 currently it's 8 uh, p.m. on Eastern time so you could see that we trimmed our entire ETH position uh, trimmed pretty much over half of our LTC and BCH and we are now in 80% capital okay this was about five five and a half hours ago okay and if we go back to that chart right and these are all hourly candles you can go so one two three four five okay so five hours ago this is essentially where we trimmed our position okay so you know for sure that we sold off right near the top we didn't get exactly tip top but we got pretty close to it right now what we're waiting for is to see if there's going to be a resurgence in price from BTC okay now Another thing that we spoke about is this. So, so you're probably wondering, okay, well, now that you sold, what's the game plan? All right, I'll tell you. Okay, so I drew this pattern on on uh, on my Bitstamp chart. Okay, and remember, this is an ascending triangle. Okay, now um, if we go over here and look at our book again, okay, what does it say about ascending triangles? All right, so ascending triangles have you know at least a couple touches at the top, couple touches at the bottom, and now you know um, that what you do is you clone this line right here and you put it from the first touch of the ascending triangle top um, of the triangle. Okay, so you touch it right there, and you make your price objective uh, right near the breakout uh, from this top to this bottom. So the size of that. Okay, so let me show you guys what I mean. Okay. So if I draw this kind of like this, okay? So we can make this top like that. That's the top. You just move this, the breakout occurs right there. The target should be right around this area right here, okay? About 6,000, all right? Now I made the target right around 5890. Why? Because this is essentially another big supply that we have to deal with, okay? And this um, supply comes from all this heavy resistance of the previous buyers who bought all the way into this region right here, as you can see. Okay, this wick touching, all these candles touching, all these candles touching, almost months, guys. Basically, the entirety of 2000 um, of 2018, 
there's a lot of sellers trapped in 6,000 guys and they all want to get rid of their Bitcoin once prices break even. And you know, we have to sort of figure out why exactly they want to do that. Well, let me explain, okay? When there are people, most likely retailers, when they buy at the wrong prices, all right, they don't wait for the markets to pick back up at the right time. What they really want to do is soon as you know prices sort of start ticking back up, they either want to sell at the least amount of loss or they want to sell at break even. Okay, so if people bought in this red block right here, right there, right? If people bought expecting prices to go back up here, right? So they expected this entire block right here to take them all the way up here, but instead what really happened was this block just kept bleeding and bleeding and then just went down, okay? So what's going to happen when prices come back up to that same level? When they come back up to that same level, these same buyers, they're going to want to sell, okay? And there's going to be not enough demand in this particular case to absorb the supply that's being sold. So what's going to happen? Well, prices are going to tank, okay? This is why I've stated that I still do expect a big leg down whether it's back towards 4,000, maybe this is ascending trend line right here, or at least maybe all the way down you know, to 2,800, 2,900, or maybe even the low 2,000s. I don't really know where exactly that's going to be, nor do I need to know, okay? I just know market dynamics, and I know that when you have a lot of sellers trapped, uh, or sorry, a lot of buyers trapped, uh, and they're frustrated for almost a year, uh, they're gonna want to sell at break even, guys. It, it just that's just how it works. And also, if we start looking at the historical move of Bitcoin, okay, um, let's dial back, right? Way back here, we've if we start to you know make a fractal out of this, and we say that you know current prices of Bitcoin are analogous to this part of the uh, reversal of you know the bear market in 2015 then we know that after this comes a bunch of drops of candles going back almost to the previous lows okay so we may not even get to as low as big this this big wick was right here which went down to almost 160 but we may come back to at least the three thousand dollar area right so once we come back to that three thousand dollar area that's where you're going to see the final you know pickup of all the btc that's essentially available and sold off by retailers into the hands of smart money. All right, um, you know Warren Buffett always says that you know the market is nothing but an instrument to be able to transfer um, wealth from the impatient to the patient. And I see crypto markets the same way. Any market, for that matter, or any you know aspect of life, is really the same, right? It's all about persistence and patience. Okay, if you have both, you know that you're going to succeed. And, uh, survive and succeed in the end um, the smart traders do exactly just that guys uh, th what they do is you know they make make the price look very appealing and green all around everywhere and they make it seem like it's so easy to make money in this market and then you know on a just a random day you're gonna see just prices just collapse okay and this is where you know you're gonna be uh, shitting your pants when your your entire portfolio is down, you know, 20, 40 percent um, uh, in the in less than 15 minutes. This is pretty much what happened in November, right? I mean, some of these candles essentially dropped uh, in 15 to 30 minute time spans, right? Um, and people didn't know what to do. And what's worse is, you know, BTC may have only dropped, you know, 15 percent, but alts dropped by almost 30, 40 percent sometimes. Right, and then this kind of continued for a couple of weeks, um, and then once we saw the bottom, the alts were pretty much already hammered. You know, when BTC was at six thousand, they almost went down. You know, eighty to ninety percent, um, sometimes ninety-five percent from their all-time highs. Okay, so this is where a lot of the pickups will be made in the next drop. Okay, so I've stated before in our community that. If $5,500 uh, $5, was hit first, right there, um, I will be taking profits uh, on pretty much all our positions, which I did just that. Um, or I stated that I was either looking for um, our other, let's see, 
I was stating that I wanted to take profits on LTC around 100 or um, 110. Okay, let me see exactly what chart that is. Um, I think it's this one right here. Here's here's the ether chart. Okay, um, so ether chart. I mean, kind of took off, right? And it stated for Ethereum, uh, one of our targets was going to be up here for 193, but because 193 didn't come before. Um, 5500 I had to take profits right because you know if 5500 gets hit before 193 on BTC right that means that ethereum is going to fall even further because the sharp sell-off in BTC is going to hammer alts right so we knew to take profits on um, on ethereum and all our trades and you can see right here uh, we secured some gains you know it wasn't anything significant but gains are gains right um, on our in our community, we've had almost I think 10 to 15 trades in a row that have been uh, clear winners. Maybe one or two losers actually. Uh, I never want to not talk about my losers. I think it's important that everyone talks about their losing trades because it keeps your ego in check, right? So I've I've definitely had my fair share of losers, uh, and I'm more than happy to talk about those uh, with my community. But as you can see, some of these are our gainers. Okay, and before that, we've had some big you know winners in the past. The uh, bat trade, which we've been looking at for a while, has had uh, um, almost you know significant gains that have been given to us. Uh, we rode this thing you know almost from over here all the way up to the top. Uh, that was almost a, I think a, you know, yeah, 30, 36% move. And now what we're waiting for our guys is, you know, if you're watching this right now, uh, this is a free trade for you. I'm waiting for BAT to come down to this bottom um, ascending trend line, okay? Uh, I've seen this, I've followed BAT for quite a while. Um, you know, it's on my uh, long-term portfolio watch. Uh, I don't really own any for my long-term portfolio, at least not nothing sizable. But I love trading it because it is a fantastic chart. Okay, when you look at a chart like this, um, you know, this is perfection, guys. You want to trade this, okay? Especially when BTC is moving nicely. Uh, it makes, you know, trading uh, an asset like this in a nice 45 degree angle uptrend uh, so much easier, okay? So, anyway, so going back to some of our other alts, right? So, coin, uh, I'm sorry, um, LTC was our other one. LTC, our target was about $100, and as you can see, it has not escaped that you know lower high sort of descending trend line. Um, it's it's really struggling, uh, and I think that's because BTC is also struggling um, to get past you know this $5,500 area. Okay, but you know it makes me feel a little bit comfortable knowing that we knew that this you know $5,500 area was going to be a lot of you know resistance, a lot of supply. So I'm glad we sold off and got out of that position. Now we can, you know, sort of sit in um, cash and wait for better positioning. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm talking a lot. I'm going really fast, but please let me know if you guys have any questions. Okay. And while you guys do that, I want to check out XRP. Um, this is something that I spoke about um, to my paid members and I stated um, this you know a few days ago that this big green candle right here if you had XRP it was time to let it go guys um, this thing it was you know if you would have let it go you would have avoided you know from here even another you know 15% drop okay because I'm almost certain that X XRP is going to go down to this red level right here which is about 6110 and if push comes to shove uh, XRP drops below that it's gonna go all the way down here guys almost to 4200 maybe 4400 Satoshis uh, and that's gonna be a really rough drop okay so please be careful if you are holding XRP um, it is a significantly weak asset and I refuse to trade it unless it shows me a good amount of strength um, but please you know do do keep an eye on XRP if you are trading it okay all right so one more thing that I wanted to talk about uh, is Bitcoin options. Before that, please, you know, go CryptoSomniac website, guys. Please come join our free community. 
Um, we also have a Advantage program. It's 97 a month, but anyone will tell you we make that up in less than a week, okay, with the trades that we provide. Um, we provide a lot of trades, a lot of analysis through the day. I honestly think that, you know, <laughs> $97 is cheap um, for the amount of time we spend in this community. I provide constant updates through the day. I provide educational material uh, down here. Uh, we have an ICO chat. We have a Forex chat, stock market chat. Um, you know, fundamentals only. We provide a daily newsletter right there. Uh, and here, you know, you can see all the gains reviews, guys. Here are all the people who've been making money off our calls. You know, 16.5%, 30%. Um, you know, people talking about our daily newsletter, 10 to 20% gains, 30%, um, 10% uh, on RVN. So, all these trades, guys, um, you can clearly see that, you know, people love our community. Okay. And then beyond that, Bitcoin analysis, um, you know, like I stated, um, I provide a video every single morning, 10 to 15 minute recap of what's going on, what to look for. Okay. Um, Johnny Diaz says, I'm on BTC since 5K. Any target before drop? Yeah, Johnny, um, I would probably say you want to. Here, here, let me pull up the chart and let me explain to you guys. Okay. So we are approaching already a significant amount of resistance um, in this $5,500 area. Okay. Um, I do, however, think that this area is nothing compared to um, this sideways resistance right here. Okay, so let me see what happened. I don't know what happened there. Um, let me open up a different chart. Um, I do want to also show you guys what I follow right here. Okay, so here I... Uh, I always put these four up uh, on a day-to-day -day basis because I want to look at all four of these. Um, they are clearly the market leaders, not only by market cap, but they actually absorb a lot of the volume that comes into the crypto space. And these are the leaders of the market typically. So I love you know looking at these because BTC usually is um, the trendsetter, but then one or um, maybe you know, all of these, whether it's BCH, LTC, or Ethereum, will outpace BC, uh, BTC, and I want to trade that, okay? Um, why? Because it's a good positive hedge where if BTC is going up by a percent, then I want to get into Ethereum or LTC or BCH, which might give me 2.5%, right? So if BTC goes up by 10, I might get 30 out of Ethereum. So this is why I like to take a look at a chart like this, and follow this on the five minute um, on the five minute time frame because I love looking at exactly you know where these are going to flip when Ethereum or LTC or BCH is going to start shooting up past BTC and start taking care of you know uh, business. All right. So going back to this, um, uh, where was I? Oh yeah. So I was trying to explain the six thousand dollar marker, right? So. To answer Johnny Diaz's question, okay, he's stating that you know where exactly do we look for um, since you've been in BTC since uh, 5K, okay? So here are a couple of different possibilities. All right, I'm gonna pull up this chart right now, and I want to show you guys. Like I stated before, uh, this big choppiness right here, uh, starting off at 5,900 all the way to about say 6,200 dollars, that is a ton of resistance and a ton of sellers who are going to be waiting to just offload their Bitcoin guys um, because they just want to break even like I stated earlier right so once they um, essentially get get that opportunity to sell off that Bitcoin um, this market is not going to have enough strength to push through and buy all that and so what's going to happen is prices are eventually going to collapse because they're just not going to be enough buyers to uh, absorb all that supply and people are just going to market sell and market sell and then it's going to hit more stops and more stops on the way down and that's where you see this waterfall effect of prices just collapsing okay so it's never just you know one person who just sells off like 10,000 bitcoin it's usually a cascading of events that happens someone sells you know these people are trapped they want to sell now they sell too this hits stops um now these people sell too and then you know there's a bunch of people who you know, bought into this region right here, 
uh, and they don't want you know their positions being underwater and they're gonna sell so as you can see there's multiple kinds of sellers in multiple different areas uh, and they trigger at different price points, right? And so that's how you create that waterfall, that kind of cascading effect in the drop in price, okay? Now, when we look at um, you know the $6,000 area, we clearly know that there's going to be a lot of sellers, but what could we do to essentially avoid this? Well, you know, to answer your question, Johnny, is I would probably let go of Bitcoin somewhere close to 6,000 and just avoid this region right here, okay? Once prices start, you know, ticking past, say, 6,500, um, now, if you sold off, say, at 5,900 and you bought back in at 6,500, once you know it, you have confirmation, that's not that big of a deal. That's only a $600, you know, uh, move that you're missing. It's only 10% potentially if you look at it in the grand scheme of things, right? And if we look at the history of Bitcoin, you know, since the last bear market went from 200 bucks to 20,000, and if we're to assume that Bitcoin is going to say at least 20K or 25K or 50K, um, if you miss out on five, $600 of that move because you were smart enough to sell off at resistance, you can just, you can just buy back in when the market is a lot safer. That's how the best traders do it, guys. They are essentially you know, watching this market like a hawk, any market for that matter, and they're going to sell resistance and buy support. So if you want to be a good, smart trader, just like, you know, the, the Wall Street wolves or, you know, people who make, um, you know, gains on a consistent basis, you want to sell off on this resistance and either wait up here above this area or you can wait for prices to collapse all the way down here and catch a falling knife because you know that this is going to be the final retrace before the next bull run, okay? But again, this is not promise, right? For all I know, prices could fall down to, I don't know, 1,000 or 200 bucks. Um, but again, if you're watching this video, you are in Bitcoin for the long run, you believe that this technology, this you know concept is going to be revolutionary and there's going to be ups and downs in this road. So you're willing to pay the price to you know have your position be underwater for maybe a few months by buying at say you know three thousand or four thousand or maybe two thousand. Okay, so this is just something to keep in mind, guys. Please don't you know um, sell your house and invest it all in the Bitcoin. Please don't do that. Um, you know, be careful with your finances. Please be careful about trading in this market. Again, you know, please join our community. Um, I will happily explain any and all questions that you may have about trading, how market psychology works, how supply and uh, demand zones work, order blocks work, etc. Okay, and I have an entire section dedicated to this. Okay, it's in my education channel right here. Okay, I also have a resources channel where. You know, I talk about all the things that, you know, you can look at the different indicators, um, different websites, everything to make you the best trader that you can be. OK, um, trader or investor, however you want to look at it. All right. So going back to the chart um, over here, where'd it go? All right, so going back to the chart, now what we're waiting for right now is um, we're still got, uh, we're still right in this um, you know, ascending triangle, guys. Uh, this was essentially a fake out. We didn't really um, close successfully above this. So now I'm still waiting for a high volume breakout. Okay. Now, what we need to do is wait for the breakout, a nice successful breakout, wait for the retest right in that same region, and then ride this thing back up to 5,500 or 6,000 and then sell off there. And so because we freed up this capital, right, like I stated earlier, uh, once we closed off our trade in our community, um, we closed off uh, about, you know, pretty much the, our entire trade for Ethereum, only have 10% in LTC and 10% BCH. Now we have a lot of free capital to go back into some good trades. Okay, so which trades are we going to look into? Well, again, if we start following these runners right here, um, I want to look at the ones that are going to outpace BTC and so far the last you know couple of days it's been ethereum okay ethereum is the one that's been beating LTC and BCH in um, you know its aggressive gains okay and also it actually has a better um, 
you know, downside risk than LTC and BCH. So while, you know, LTC goes down, say, 5% and BCH goes down 6%, um, you know, Ethereum has essentially been going down only 3 to 4%, okay? Hey, Vincent Liberty, um, this is Cryptosomniac.com, and you can click on Cryptosomniac Advantage and click right here to get into our Moon Lounge, okay? That's our uh, community right here. That's this one right there, okay? Moon Lounge. Um, and, you know, our community is uh, fairly, you know, talkative. We love listening. We love um, being able to help each other out. I, you know, we have people from all uh, different ages, all walks of life. We have people from Australia and New Zealand and Hungary and uh, India and United States and South America, um, different continents and uh, people who are, you know, in their young 30s or mid 20s um, or early 50s and 60s. Okay. So, so please, yeah, come, come check us out. Okay. All right. So going back to this chart right here, what we are really looking forward to is, you know, seeing if uh, the $5,500 is going to break and then, you know, 5,900, 6,000, that's where you want to take your profits guys. And, um, essentially just, just wait the market out. Okay. Hey, what's up Desmond? How you doing, man? Good morning. Um, so yeah so like i stated right we're going to um want to take profits up in this region guys so do keep an eye on that for your own sake um you know i obviously cannot advise you to do anything but i'm going to tell you exactly what i'm going to do and uh you know we're in our community we're on a good you know trade win streak we're doing a good job we make money uh, we make gains so you know come come join guys okay and also, um, one other thing that I want to talk about is uh, the 2.618 Fibonacci extension target is right around 5700 bucks too. And you're probably wondering where exactly that comes from. Well, that comes from, you know, the retrace from this high right here, which is about 4250 or so, down to this um, target right here, okay? So this extension comes from this retrace right there, okay? And that 2.618 comes from that same one. All right. Now, again, uh, I've showed you guys this chart before too. Um, let me turn off the volume real quick because we are in the middle of potentially the third wave or we're finishing off the third wave and we're now in the middle of the fifth wave. Okay, so here's that fifth wave um, right there. We are potentially going to finish that off just a hair above, you know, well, not a hair, but probably a couple hundred dollars above that $5,500 uh, movement right there. And like I stated, 5,900 to 6,000 is probably going to be your target. All right. Um, are there any questions that you guys have for me? Okay. So one other thing um, that I did want to mention is you know, on the uh, weekly chart, okay, so we're going to look at the BLX chart. We are getting pretty darn close, guys, to that, uh, you know, trend line that we've held for BTC. Uh, and that's also right around 58, 5900 as per, you know, BLX prices, okay? Um, so not only that, you know, it's getting a little interesting in terms of the TD sequential, okay? If you guys... You know, follow the TD. Um, it's it's a really good in, indicator developed by Tom DeMarc. Um, so he uh, he created this indicator, which marks out um, candles in one to nine or one to thirteen um, numbered movements, whether it's impulsive moves on the way up or um, corrective moves on the way down. And he states that. Usually the nine candle, the nine, you know, successive moves on the way up lead to a potential one to four candle correction after. And if it gets to 13, you typically more than likely will see a, you know, at least a one to four candle correction or a reverse in trend. Okay. So you can see, you know, say this one right here, um, the nine candle, um, it clearly marked a top 
and then after that we corrected down to at least four or five candles and then we made about seven or eight candle moves up and then corrected one to three more and here we finally made you know nine weeks up 10 11 and then boom this is where we started our you know reversal of our trend okay so i hope you know you learn about tom to mark uh, td sequential uh, on your own or you can come join our community and you can learn about it there but it's a very essential indicator if you know exactly how to use it okay using it on different time frames is also going to be helpful all right um, another thing that I want to talk about is on the weekly chart, you can see that, you know, we are slowly escaping out of this descending parallel channel that we've had. Uh, we also are hitting the top of the, uh, trend line right there. And we have the 200, um, EMA, uh, right under us now too. Okay. So 200 EMA actually held us down over here. Um, basically held us flat right around 41 4200 bucks so we could actually come down and hit that 200 ema as support um you know around 41 4200 and then bounce back up again okay that's also a possibility right if prices do retrace um another one another uh moving average i like to look at is the uh, 200 moving average not the exponential but just the simple moving average and this one was actually the one that held us at uh you know the 3100 bottom and we touched it pretty much again right here around 33 3400 and now it looks like we've pretty much veered away from it and it, so if prices do come back down we may expect prices to come down to say 35 3600 over the next couple of weeks okay uh, because this is something that's been done in BTC way back here in 2015 bear market, right? Um, let's dial back. You can see that right there, that yellow moving average. Uh, it touched it right there once, twice, went up all the way over here, created a higher high as per this one, and then came back to touch it again, and then pretty much never looked back uh, until, you know, um, uh, last year in, in December, okay? So these are some moving averages that you may want to keep an eye on, all right? Okay, so like I said, guys, uh, come join our community. You know, we have our channel, which provides trades right here. We have uh, other channels and medium term. Long term is our long term investments that we want to invest uh, for a longer period of time, one of which is Horizon. Uh, all the research is right here. Why we expected to, you know, get into this, um, get into this investment, and uh, you know what kind of time horizon we're looking at. We actually picked up, you know, horizon almost perfectly right at the bottom in this region. So if you were part of our community, um, you know, you should be up about a good 20, 30 percent on your investment already. All right. Um, you know, another one is XLM. Uh, NAS is my other hold, Ethereum, Bitcoin. Uh, Nexo is, you know, one of my big, um, one of my big bets for 2020 and 2021, and then Maker Dow. Okay, so there's a lot of uh, a lot of good opportunities that we have, and I uh, I hope to I hope to see you guys in our community. Um, if y'all have any questions. Uh, Russell says, have you ever looked at Tyler Jenks' hyperwave? BTC ha was identified as a confirmed hyperwave by him. Based on that, he says BTC 1K will happen. The hyperwave has behaved this way for 45 years. Uh, I do know Tyler Jenks, or rather I know of him, uh, and I do actually believe in his hyperwave theory. However, um, you know, I don't quite know if, you know, BTC has to go down to the a 1000 is a necessity okay um, you know you could have technically made the same argument I wonder if Tyler Jenks would you know make the same argument uh, back here where is it let's go back to that BLX chart right we have the BLX chart right here right I wonder if Tyler Jenks would make the same argument um, when we saw BTC go from you know down here to 67 all the way to 1200 would he have you know made the same argument saying that you know, BTC should go down to 50 or 20 or 30 because I know he operates in seven waves, right? Um, yeah, exactly, seven waves, right? So I know that the seventh wave has completed and now, you know, we have to go below essentially 
the previous um, bull market high, which means right around 1200 bucks. Okay. Uh, now I don't really know if that has to happen because you know, not only does it not have to happen, it also doesn't have to happen in a long um, um, time elapsed way, right? So you don't have to spend a significant amount of time uh, in the 1000 region, you could just have a really sharp wick that touches, you know, say 1500 1200 or something and reverses in the same week, it could very well be possible, right? So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I, you, you are right. It seems low to me, but he is convinced that it will happen. 45 years is a long damn time. You know, Russell, here's another interesting thing. Um, not, I'm not saying that Bitcoin is exempt to other market forces, but I have never in my life, and I know Tyler Jenks has mentioned this too, um, I've never in my life have seen any asset class go parabolic on the log scale. I've seen, you know, tons of assets go parabolic and linear like this, right? Straight up like that. Okay, that's going straight up. Um, this is a parabolic move like this. Okay, to see this happen on the log scale like this is almost um, is almost, you know, something that I've never seen. Most people have never seen. So I find that really interesting because you know, Bitcoin has defied all odds and has surprised so many people so many times about how high it can go or how low it can go and then still recover for higher highs that it could very well be possible that even Tyler Jenks' theory of hyperwave could, you know, be uh, dealt a big blow of not coming true for Bitcoin to go below, you know, a thousand. Okay. Um, but I've stated before that I do expect, you know, this gap right here, 1900 to 1200 to be filled or at least touched once because I don't think that, you know, this area um, has been tested properly as, you know, support or resistance flip support. Uh, not that gaps need to be filled, but I do, however, think that gaps like this mean that there's a lot of buyers who, you know, may... Uh, not want prices to be tested at back at this level and if they are that means they're going to be really scared and they are for sure going to sell off okay and this is where there's going to be a lot of bitcoin to be collected and if that happens there's going to be a lot of smart traders targeting this area and buy up all of it and then push the markets higher okay all right um i i think that's pretty much all i have guys uh yeah, Russell says 2015 was not a hyperwave. I thought, um, you know, the way he explains it is there's, you know, seven different cycles and he counts 2015 as one of the waves and uh, 2018 top was the wave seven. I'll go back over it again and I'll check it out. But for the most part, um, you know, I do like Tyler Jenks and I, you know, hey, if, if he's right, uh, I mean, hey, you know, more, more props to him, right? More power to him. But for now, um, you know, the market is telling us that uh, it is ready to at least head back up towards a high 5,000s, um, low three uh, or low 6,000s. And uh, we're going to keep an eye on that. Okay. Uh, as you can see, prices are now, you know, trickling back up towards, uh, you know, 53, 5400, at least on the one hour chart. And, uh, you know, I'm going to try to see if we can get into some more positions in Ethereum or LTC in our community. Again, if you are interested, come join our Cryptosomniac channel, um, Advantage program right there. I'll actually go over uh, Bitcoin options real quick, too. Um, I've closed now uh, two successful options trades, one of which was April 5th expiration, which already expired. Um, I made about uh, a 755% uh, return on that. It wasn't a massive, um, it wasn't a massive um, a position that I had, um, but you know, uh, options, especially in Bitcoin space uh, with low volatility on, uh, or I'm sorry, low liquidity on Deribit is, is pretty hard to do. OK, um, and now, you know, I just closed my uh, five thousand one twenty five strike price to um, option call. 
uh, just a few hours ago and I made about a 55% um, return on investment on that as well. Uh, so, you know, my accounts aren't big, but I wanted to show you guys real quick. Even if you go back to my previous videos, uh, I was actually, this account right here was uh, 0.02. Okay, so I have two sub accounts, right? And this account right here, um, the main one, let's see which one that was. Uh, that one was 0 0.04, okay? And as you can see, that's uh, 0 0.14 now. So I gained about 0.1 BTC on this one, and I gained about, um, I think, uh, 0 .06, 0 .06, um, 0 0.07 BTC on the other account, okay? I would say that's, you know, pretty sizable gains, at least, you know, for Bitcoin options. They're not that easy. Um, but in this market, there's a lot of opportunity to make some money, and uh, we are making it. All right, and I try to you know tell my community whatever positions I'm in, I announce everything, guys. So you know, come join our channel, and I can show you guys more information about options. I'll actually be releasing a course on Bitcoin options uh, soon. I have to put that together. Um, but I'm really excited that you know Deribit is a platform that's increasing. Uh, their liquidity, they're you know far better of a player in this market than BitMEX. I highly urge you guys to not trade BitMEX. Um, I would probably say just uh, please stay away and stop giving your money away to Arthur Hayes or you know the the Bitcoin whales over there, and uh, you will be far better off trading in a market uh, like Deribit or you can trade over here. Okay. Um, while we're talking, it looks like BTC is again taking a couple dollars down. Um, it's finding it, you know, a bit of a struggle, as you can see. I wanted to see something real quick, okay? Um, on the 30 minute chart, I had drawn up these grids right here, and I mentioned to one of my members that um, you do not want to see prices close under this, under this trend line right here, okay? When prices close under this trend line, guys, uh, there's a pretty high probability that they'll go down at least to 51, 5200, or you know 5000, 5030, uh, and you know maybe worst case scenario they may go down to 4800. Okay, this was one of the big supports as well. So let's keep an eye on that to make sure that you know prices do not go that much further. Um, but as you can see, uh, there is a lot of uh, resistance being placed in the way of BTC right now. And I mentioned we need to watch the top of this trend line right here, and you can clearly see that's being rejected. Um, that makes me even happier for not getting into a position again. So I'm happy to be sitting out, you know, in majority of cash, and uh, you know now we're just waiting it out, guys. Um, so it's it's wonderful to be you know out in cash in a position like this because if Bitcoin happens to bounce in this region right here. We can pick up um, we can pick up some positions again, right? So, you know, we, we, we don't sell the tops exactly, but we sell it pretty close, right? All right, um, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I don't think I have anything else, but I hope you guys enjoyed um, my content. Please go to cryptosomniac.com, join the Advantage program, or if you want to learn technical analysis, guys, uh, please you know um, take this course. I spent about five to ten hours on this, and I only charged ten bucks because I wanted everyone to learn about this market. And I want you guys to, you know, uh, understand technicals so you can call out the bullshitters on, you know, crypto Twitter or uh, YouTube um, when they start saying things um, uh, that they don't know what they're talking about. Okay, and so you know that's something that we. Uh, really harp on in our community is please you know learn as much as you can educate yourself uh, get smarter um, ask questions uh, read and you know um, yeah we're always there to help okay that's all folks and I hope you guys enjoy your evening it's a happy Wednesday uh, we are sitting on some gains for today come join our community cryptosomniac dot com uh, advantage program 97 a month but i bet you any money that you can make that money back in less than a week all right all right guys that's it take care cheers and also i'll be teaching options soon 
So if you're interested in learning options, futures, how to short or long, uh, you know, margin trade, yeah, we, we teach that as well in our community, okay? That's it. Cheers.